Hi guys, it's ASPYT and here we have the OnePlus 8 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro. Three incredible phones, but which is the best? Now the reason I'm making this video is because I don't feel a lot of the current comparison style content on YouTube provides you with the best information. Many creators will do a quick review after a couple of days and then move on to the next big thing. And in that time, it's impossible to really get to know a device. So here we are after the buzz, after the hype, full comparison review. The pros, the cons, the truth. And what are each of these three actually really like to use as your daily driver? Now, firstly, pretty much all info I will give you about the iPhone could be for the Pro and Pro Max models, as to be honest, they're identical, other than the fact that the Max is larger and therefore has a larger battery, which we'll talk about now. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase here. The iPhone 11 Pro Max has the best battery bar none. But for these three, it's not so cut and dried. I actually recently did a battery drain test on the S20 Ultra, the OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro, but not a drain test like you may have seen previous. In nearly every single one of those battery drain test videos, the creator will punish the phones to their max with multiple apps, games, media, benchmark tests, etc., from 100% right down to zero. And while that is all well and good, you can see the exact 100% performance of a phone, I don't think is really accurate for how we actually use our smartphones. Those videos don't take into account standby drain and just day-to-day -day real world use that 99% of us would have. So what I did was charge all three of them to the full and then allowed the everyday drain test to commence. All phones have the same wallpaper and crucially all phones were set to 60 hertz refresh rate. Now yes the S20 Ultra and the OnePlus 8 Pro can go to 120 hertz but as the iPhone can't which of course is a negative, I didn't think it was fair to punish the other two by setting them to a higher refresh rate because of course that would have had a negative effect on their battery drain. Now the display resolution was a harder one to be accurate on as both Android phones are capable of Quad HD+, with a PBR density of 511 and 513, so both are incredibly similar. Whereas the iPhone 11 Pro is again not quite as good, with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 and a PPI density of 458. This places it better than Full HD, but not quite as good as the Samsung and OnePlus phones. This high resolution on the Android phones will have a slight impact on battery life, so you could toggle them both to Full HD Plus if you wanted a bit more juice. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were on. All three were set to screen off after five minutes and all phones had zero apps open at the start of the test. Also, all three phones had auto brightness on because I feel that that's how the majority of us would use your phone. And one final thing, dark theme was enabled on all three. Now the test started at midday and continued all the way through over a 24 hour plus period, by which time all three phones eventually died at slightly different times. Throughout the day, every five to 10 minutes or so, I would unlock the phones and open an app one by one and leave it open and running in the background. During the test, I opened up social media apps like Twitter and Instagram, had a couple of small gaming sessions on each phone, as well as watching a little bit of Tiger King on Netflix. I used the camera on each, taking a few of the same snaps and some quick video recording tests as well. As the test ran through, I took screenshots of all of the battery percentages at different intervals throughout the day. Now, first thing to note, the iPhone actually started off better with the other two beginning to drain quicker in the first period at a very similar rate. With the iPhone's 3046 mAh battery, the smallest of all three phones, staying at 100% for quite a while. Also surprisingly, the phone that started losing battery the quickest was actually the S20 Ultra with the largest 5,000 mAh battery cell, compared to the OnePlus 8 Pro's 4,510 mAh cell. Important to note, the differences weren't huge in the early stages between the three though. About halfway through, the iPhone's lead was relinquished and all three were neck and neck as the test continued to run overnight. They were still extremely close the following morning with the Ultra a fraction in front. The iPhone continued to fall away through the morning around the time I ran a few games on each. And as we got to about an hour before all three would call it quits, the iPhone was still behind, but not by a lot. I ran some camera photo and video tests on each, including a couple of minutes of 8K video on the Ultra and 4K Cine mode on the OnePlus 8 Pro, which was the only time I did anything different between the phones in that 24 hour plus period. These two actions would probably make up for the final drop off of those two Android devices right at the end. But the test overall showed me actually how similar the three are in everyday use. It also brought to light my issue of frustration with Samsung. It's clear from this test that had the S20 Ultra been equipped with the Snapdragon 865, which is in the 8 Pro, and that you would get in regions like the US and China, as opposed to the Exynos 990 that we get in the UK and Europe, for example, with its larger battery cell, the S20 Ultra would have been the clear winner in this battery drain test. 
Charging speed, on the other hand, is a completely different ball game. With the iPhone 11 Pro taking over an hour and a half to fully charge compared to the hour, give or take, of the other two. Crucially though, the OnePlus 8 Pro can get to 50% in just over 20 minutes, which is crazy quick. All have wireless charging, but again, the OnePlus 8 Pro can use 30 watts wireless charging if you buy their own branded wireless charger. Now, another hugely important factor when deciding on a brand new smartphone is, of course, uh, camera quality. And here we're starting with the front facing video. Uh, we've got 1080p on the OnePlus 8 on this side, Max, and we've got 4K on the S20 Ultra in the middle. And uh, we have 4K at 60 as well on the iPhone 11 Pro. So those two uh, have, uh, there's Dottie, she's loving it. Uh, those who have the better quality in terms of resolution, etc., and frame rate. Um, but let me know what you feel about the HDR uh, and the color temperature as well. Which one would you go for in this scenario? I'm just going to do a bit of movement so you can hear the audio as I move away as well. And uh, also checking for that HDR as well as we're getting uh, quite a big jump off with the OnePlus 8 Pro compared to the other two, which remain fairly overexposed a little bit uh, in that sky area. Let me know what you think. Here are some video samples from the rear cameras and let me know what you think of the stabilization and picture quality. For me, in terms of dynamic range, the S20 Ultra, like with a host of Samsung phones before it, does tend to overexpose bright skies a little compared to the other two, which have very similar, pretty brilliant HDR capabilities. Stabilization is pretty excellent, again, across the board. Apple were the king for a while in this department, but the other two have definitely closed that gap, especially OnePlus as the 8 Pro for me is pretty much on par, which is remarkable. All three though using OIS and EIS are excellent. Focus hunting is still a little bit worse on the two Android phones though. Now the S20 Ultra does have 8K capabilities, which the others don't, which is a crazy feature for a smartphone camera. And although, as I said in my original review, there is a heavy crop and there are some focus issues, but it's great that there's an extra resolution, especially if you want to crop in and take frames for stills, etc. I also like the new cine mode on the OnePlus 8 Pro, which gives an industry cinema standard 21 by 9 aspect ratio, although they should really have included 24 frames per second with that. The iPhone 11 Pro doesn't have any of those tricks or bells and whistles, but for standard regular video capture, it is still incredible and right at the top of the game. Now we move on to stills, starting with portrait mode. Straight from the off in terms of edge detection, it's pretty poor on the iPhone. The S20 Ultra's live focus and OnePlus's own portrait mode perform better, but if I had to pick, I would say the S20 Ultra is just an edge ahead of edge detection. Sorry, that was really poor. The OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro, in my opinion, being too warm and the S20 Ultra probably being somewhere in the middle and the sharpest of all three. My one biggest complaint about the live focus mode on the S20 Ultra is the slow shutter speed, which means if there's any motion at all in the shot, that motion blur can render the whole shot completely useless as there's just no focus whatsoever. If you've got a still target, it's great. If you've got kids or pets or anything that's moving, it's not great. The OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro are better in this department, but neither compare to the Pixel 4. Similar color temperatures also apply across the board on the front camera portrait shots. Although I would say the OnePlus 8 Pro produces probably the sharpest selfies and often has a slightly cooler, more washed out look. Furthermore, due to the slight beautifying qualities of the S20 Ultra, shots sometimes do look a little bit softer, but possibly more cinematic. This area of course is incredibly subjective, so let me know what you think. You can use the 48 megapixel mode on the front camera on the S20 Ultra for some insane detail, although live focus is not available with this yet. All have wide angle lenses, although for me, the OnePlus 8 Pro with its 48 megapixel sensor compared to the S20 Ultra's 16 megapixel and the iPhone's 12 megapixel one, it's capable of producing shots with more detail than the other two. It's not massively noticeable on social media, for example, but if you do want to reframe or slightly crop in, it becomes more evident. The iPhone 11 Pro and more so the S20 Ultra, however, have a much wider field of view. And I just think overall look better for a wide angle shot. For the primary shooter, Samsung boasts a 108 megapixel sensor, OnePlus a 48 megapixel, and the iPhone again, just a 12. So yes, in terms of clarity and detail, the order of ability is the same. But by default on the S20 Ultra and the 8 Pro, it just uses the 12 megapixel mode which means some users won't even notice this improvement. 
Now the OnePlus 8 Pro still struggles with processing speed with viewing the shot you've just taken, still a bit of a chore. It seems to have improved slightly after updates, but it's still not as quick as the S20 Ultra and both aren't as snappy, pun intended, as viewing the 12 megapixel shots on the iPhone. If we're talking zoom, there's simply only one winner. It's incredibly impressive that the advertised 100 times zoom on the S20 Ultra is even available on a smartphone, even if the quality is, as expected, not great. But the real quality shines through with the 10 times hybrid optical zoom compared to the three times optical zoom and the two times optical on the OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro respectively. The iPhone reaches maximum zoom at 10 times and the 8 Pro at 30 times, but all the way through those zoom stages, the S20 Ultra is superior. The OnePlus 8 Pro does have a pretty great macro mode, allowing you to get really up close and personal while still maintaining great focus, something the other two simply can't match. I personally don't have massive use for a macro mode, but I know a lot of you out there will. OnePlus also have included a new filter camera, but I personally don't really get this inclusion. It does allow you to take photos with some really cool looking opposite colors, etc., but it's not something you can't really do in post anyway. It's kind of quite cool, but not really necessary. And I personally think they should have used their time and effort somewhere else. But again, let me know what you think. Now, night mode is another area where there have been improvements all round. Although the most impressive thing is how far OnePlus have come here. iPhone shots look probably more natural, but the other two certainly more striking on the whole. Which do you prefer? Shots that depict the scene more accurately or ones that pick out more details in the shadows, but can look a little bit artificial at times. I personally would probably go S20 Ultra or OnePlus 8 here. Now the front camera quite simply is a mixed bag in terms of low light performance, but the iPhone again is probably the least impressive. I would say the S20 Ultra, but again, which do you prefer? So overall in terms of cameras, all three are incredibly impressive and you will probably be happy with any of the three picks knowing that you've got a great camera. I've liked what Samsung and Apple have done from a camera point of view for quite a while, but for me, it's great to see OnePlus making such big strides and competing with a thousand plus powerhouses in the camera department. Now we've touched a little bit on different chipsets and how they may affect battery, but let's delve a little bit deeper into how they affect the overall performance. Starting of course with your traditional benchmark scores. And again here you can firstly see the difference between the Exynos 990 in the S20 Ultra and the Snapdragon 865 in the OnePlus 8 Pro. The Exynos gets slightly higher single core scores, but the Snapdragon crushes in multi-core scores. So again, if you can get hold of the Snapdragon variant of the S20 Ultra, I would recommend doing so. Don't tell Samsung I told you that. However, both are beaten in raw benchmark scores by last year's A13 Bionic chip in the iPhone 11 Pro. Apple's chipsets are just ridiculous. For the average consumer, you will not notice the difference. But for tech heads out there, credit where credit's due, the offering from Apple just takes the biscuit here. Now, what does all this mean for gaming, for example? If we're comparing the other two, the Snapdragon 865 and the OnePlus 8 Pro tends to stay cooler longer than the Exynos 990 in the S20 Ultra, meaning the S20 Ultra will begin to throttle quicker. The Snapdragon also handles higher frame rates better. So for those sorts of heavy duty titles, the OnePlus 8 Pro, in my experience, handles it a little bit better. Again, this may differ if you've got a Snapdragon version of the S20 Ultra. Overall, gaming on all three is brilliant and the average person won't really notice a massive difference between the three. But what you will notice a big difference on is of course, the displays. Both the offerings from OnePlus and Samsung are so superior here. They make the iPhone 11 Pro look about three years old. iPhone 10, 10s, 11 Pro, it, yeah. Same design. They're not only superior in looks though, as they both have the ability to go to 120 hz refresh rate and 240 hz touch sampling. So everything appears quicker and smoother, whether you're browsing, scrolling, or jumping in and out of different apps. Now the OnePlus 8 Pro can take advantage of that 120 hz refresh rate in Quad HD+, whereas if you want the high refresh rate on the S20 Ultra, it's only available in Full HD. So both incredible displays, probably the two best on the market, but for that reason, and the fact that it's actually slightly brighter than the S20 Ultra, I would go with the OnePlus 8 Pro for display. I mean, it's literally 1,444 nits. If only it had a notch like the iPhone 11 Pro. It's joking. Quick side note about everyday performance, and the RAM management isn't as good on the iPhone. The difference isn't as big as the RAM amounts would suggest, 
but I do find when jumping in and out of certain apps, some will reload from scratch, which can be a little bit annoying. It's not all the time and it's not terrible. It's just a thing that I don't get with the other two. Also, weirdly, I'm getting more Wi-Fi issues with the iPhone 11 Pro in terms of dropouts and failing to connect. I have to turn on and off the Wi-Fi as certain apps and websites will say no connection. Again, not terrible, not all the time, but noticeable compared to the other two. Another area to do with connection is, of course, 5G compatibility, which, of course, again, places the S20 Ultra and the OnePlus 8 Pro in a more favorable light. Both are 5G ready, whereas the iPhone 11 Pro is only 4G max. Not a massive issue right now, but if you're looking to future-proof, again, steer clear of the iPhone or wait for the iPhone 12. Now, in terms of software, obviously, we have the biggest battle in the world of tech. iOS versus Android, iPhone versus Samsung or OnePlus. It's a tasty one. And I know the comments are going to be going wild as we speak. For me, it's very simple. If you're invested in the Apple ecosystem, owning a MacBook, iPad, etc., and heavily using AirDrop and like being able to call and text from such devices, then the iPhone will always be the better option for you. But Android is better for customizing your experience to suit you with app ordering, widgets, and having freedom to download third-party apps that aren't available on the regulated app stores without, of course, jailbreaking or rooting. For me, OnePlus's Oxygen OS is probably just about the pinnacle on the Android side, although Samsung's One UI has made huge strides recently, and I really do enjoy using both. Then, of course, there's the simple matter of price, and the OnePlus 8 Pro absolutely cleans up here. Starting from £799 compared to the £1,049 of the iPhone 11 Pro and the eye-watering £1,199 on the S20 Ultra. While the 8 Pro is more expensive than any OnePlus device to date, considering they've added true expensive flagship features like the mentioned wireless charging, IP68 rating and a great camera a truly brilliant industry-leading display with a 120Hz refresh rate and a decent battery to the original already stellar OnePlus traditions of having the most powerful chipset available, great design and build quality, some of the best software on the planet. To me, the price is just about justified. Whether you like it or not, OnePlus as a company are changing. They've survived the flagship killer lapse long enough to grow big enough to mount a serious late charge in the flagship title race. Three truly brilliant phones, and you will be happy with any of them. But considering the OnePlus 8 Pro more than holds its own in this three-way tug of war and does so for £300 less, it's a dynamite combination. Let me know what you think, which of the three is the best phone. Like and share if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you love everything tech, breaking news, unboxings, reviews. I love you, Levy. I'll see you in the next one. Says so, Peace out. You do just what you want.